All right, now, feeling lucky? Let's go through our story deck and see if we have a winner. You know, many academics believe there are only seven basic plot structures in all of storytelling. Lucky seven, huh? One of the proponents of this theory was Christopher Booker, who popularized it with his book, The Seven Basic Plots. So, let's whip out our story deck and take a look at these seven basic plots. Number one, overcoming the monster. Clearly, a story about me meeting my mother-in-law. <laughs> I'm just kidding. These stories involve an evil force threatening the main character or their world. Many horror stories are this plot type, including the classic novel and movie, Jaws. That story begins, like many of these do, with the audience getting a strong sense of the danger that the monster poses. It looms in the distance or makes its first kill. Let's the writer throw in some cannon fodder. Thanks. We have feelings too, you know. Then our main character is introduced. They usually hear about the threat without having seen it, but they decide to go off and face the risk, knowing the danger. The main character attempts to prepare themselves for the task, but upon encountering the monster, they realize this problem is way worse than they thought. After a good failure, or many good failures, they finally emerge victorious. Now remember, not all uh, monsters are horrific creatures. Some of them might be other people or government systems. For example, many James Bond movies take on this formula, pitting 007 against a monstrous adversary. Let's dive back into the deck and pull out another story plot. Ooh, I like this one. Number two, rags to riches. <laughs> Who doesn't love an underdog story? In these tales, we witness the rise of an obscure soul with a low rank become a high-powered force to be reckoned with, and usually rich as well. Some examples of this plot include Cinderella, Aladdin, Annie, and the Ugly Duckling. Usually, we begin the story seeing the main character miserable and in a depressingly bad state, like they're looking at their college loan statements or something. Suddenly, out of nowhere, something appears to change things, like a fairy godmother, or a magic lamp, or a rich bald eccentric. At first, things seem to be going well for them. Unfortunately, this new situation has come upon them quickly, and they find themselves overwhelmed by the situation, or uh, making mistakes. Kind of like when people win the lottery all of a sudden. Anyway, they hit a dark point. Their mistakes and uh, the situation proves too much for them. However, they dive deep, and through the strength of their character, that uh, nobody noticed up until this point, they manage to pull off success in their new world. And now they've truly earned their victory and their enormous payday. <laughs> Ooh, I like that one. Number three, the quest. Quest stories involve a search for something, and it means your main character is going to set off from home on a grand adventure. A classic quest story is Lord of the Rings, where Frodo has to set off from the Shire on his journey to destroy the One Ring. Usually, the story begins with the hero learning of the mission, or uh, being thrust into the mission. Seriously, he swam out in open water for like two seconds. With a goal in mind, destroying the ring, uncovering the Holy Grail, finding Nemo. The main character sets off on his journey, usually befriending a cast of colorful characters along the way. Of course, this journey isn't going to be easy, and the hero finds themselves encountering obstacles and barriers on their journey. Just when you think the goal is in sight and they've just about completed their journey, uh-oh, it turns out it's a lot more difficult than they expected. Just when things seem completely hopeless, they take the knowledge they learned along their journey and finally achieve success. Hooray! By the way, don't miss out on our other videos. Like this video, subscribe, hit the bell. Autocrit, it's a good place. All right, what's next? Hmm. Number four, voyage and return. The hero gets snatched up from the normal world and pulled into a strange world. They end up needing to escape the strange world and uh, gain some knowledge as a result of the whole adventure. 
Some examples include Back to the Future, Peter Pan, Alice in Wonderland, The Time Machine, and The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. We begin with the main character in a normal life until a strange event sucks them into a bizarre world. Suddenly they realize they're not in Kansas anymore. But hey, it's pretty cool. Flowers sing, there are talking lions or mermaids, but it ain't home. So how are they gonna get back? It ain't going to be easy. You see a dark force is affecting this strange world and the hero is going to have to conquer it in order to escape. Somehow, through bravery, intelligence, luck, they pull it off and they escape from the world wiser for the experience. Ooh, I hope this is a good one. <laughs> Number five, comedy. Comedy doesn't just mean that a story is funny. It's a specific plot type involving a situation that gets worse and worse through a series of humorous events. It usually begins with the main character finding themselves in the situation through mistaken identity, coincidence, or foolishness. Anyway, what starts out as awkward quickly becomes crazier and crazier until eventually it seems that the main character itself is going to be swallowed by the mayhem. However, they persevere either through cunning or foolishness or coincidence and end out okay in the end. And if you're in a Shakespeare play, probably married as well. <laughs> I mean, even the characters with two lines get paired off in those comedies. Some examples include Much Ado About Nothing, Bridget Jones's Diary, Singing in the Rain, and Pride and Prejudice. Well, enough laughing. Let's get on to number six. Number six, tragedy. Buzzkill, yeah, not every story has a happy ending. Tragedies are when the main character has a major flaw that ultimately becomes their undoing. For example, in the musical Hamilton, his dogged determination in pursuit of his personal name ends up sealing his fate in the final duel. Ah, uh, spoiler! It's in the opening song. Besides, I think they're okay. The story is 200 years old. Tragedies begin when the main character obsessed with something. Wealth, fame, love, something that they cannot live without. Along the way, they make choices of which there is no return, and we end up hanging on for the ride on their path towards total destruction. Along the road, the main character encounters obstacles along the way. As they encounter them, the audience notices that the choices they make will only seal their doom at the end. The situation becomes tenser, and more and more bad choices are made until finally they fall prey to the situation. It's a risky strategy choosing a tragedy, depending on the audience. <coughs> Hence Hamilton giving it away in the opening number since most musicals are comedies. But a good tragedy can leave an indelible mark on the audience. We all know the classic strategies of Shakespeare like King Lear or Macbeth, but there are other modern examples such as Thelma and Louise, The Godfather, or Citizen Kane. And finally, last but not least, Number seven. Number seven, Rebirth. In these stories, something happens in the main character's life to make them change and grow and become a better person. Perhaps the most obvious example of this is A Christmas Carol, where Scrooge transforms from a greedy, miserable miser to a generous, warm-hearted soul. In these stories, the main character begins rather unlikable. After all, they have to grow throughout the story and they face a major obstacle keeping them from what they want. The situation becomes more and more tense until finally the character reaches a near-death situation. However, this traumatic experience was merely the death of their former self. With the knowledge that this event created, the character seeks out to begin life anew with a different perspective on things. Not only does Christmas Carol fit the bill, but a lot of other Christmas stories tend to be rebirth stories. Other examples include Groundhog Day and Doctor Strange. So what say you? Do you think there are only seven basic plot types? What are some of your favorite films or books? And which plot type do you think they are? Comment below. Which is your favorite to write? Until next time, keep those story cards shuffling and uh, get writing. Just a reminder, subscribe, ring the bell on this channel, and uh, 
Check out these videos, some great writing tips for you. We'll see you there.